I know one of the innovations that that you seem to be most passionate about right passionate about right now is the emerging recognition of what you're calling the unique self. Mm. So I thought as a tipping jumping off point, maybe you could just tell us what what you mean by the unique self, why it's such an important insight to integrate into our understanding of spirituality. With 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 delight, Craig. And unique self of course relates directly to what is this evolution of awakening that's happening what's this evolution of spirit that we can actually feel pulsing within us and the first place that we see it right is in this distinction between what we might call the eternity principle and the evolutionary principle classical enlightenment is of course about the eternity principle light was perceived as this undifferentiated halo and to be enlightened meant you left your particularity, you left your separateness, uniqueness, and we'll talk about the distinction between those terms in a few minutes, but you left your separateness and you became part of the light. And in the light, you were undifferentiated. You were part of the eternal principle. You rested in eternity. And in that sense, enlightenment was an attainment. You got there. Enlightenment was the end of the story. You achieved a stable state of realizing that you were actually resting in the ground of being, you were no longer experiencing yourself merely as an isolated part, as a skin-encapsulated ego, as a separate self, separate from God, separate from nature, and separate from other, competing and grasping and striving to survive. You began to experience the truth of your reality. Right? Enlightenment is to know the truth, the reality of your true nature. And you began to experience that I'm actually part of a larger whole. I am part of the seamless coat of the universe. And therefore, that experience as the stable ground of my being right, became gorgeously right, what we called enlightenment. And then, right, and then, and then, and then the God ecstatic, beautiful impulse right, of evolutionary unfolding right, of what, you know, about a hundred years ago, people started calling being and becoming. Right? Not the urge to merge into being, but the urge to emerge, right? to become, to emerge. Right? As it played, we began to realize more and more that the nature of our realization right, wasn't actually only about participating in eternity and realizing that we're part of the larger whole, we're part of the seamless code of the universe. We began to understand that the code of the universe is seamless but not featureless. Right? That actually each expression of that seamless code of the universe has its own unique face, has its own unique expression, has its own perspective. In the Hebrew tradition, which is a text tradition, right, perspectives was a very important idea. You have a different perspective on the text. So for example, in the original Hebrew tradition, which talks about the, the revelation of the infinite love at the mountain of Sinai several thousand years ago, there's this beautiful description that everyone is looking at the mountain from a different angle, from a different perspective. And that different perspective itself actually, in a mystical sense, writes what's called your letter in the cosmic scroll. That your letter in the cosmic scroll is written by your unique perspective. So what we began to realize was, Right? And again, a deep bow to all the people in the conversation. Right? And, and I just had this particular conversation and this particular formulation with Ken a week ago. Right? I mean, it's a beautiful formulation. Right? As the idea of perspective comes online, we realize actually that we need not only to, real, to realize our classical enlightenment right? or our true self, right? and the total number of true selves is one, right? because our true self means that you know, Craig and Mark and Claire Right, and Diane and Jack and Catherine all participate right, in the seamless code of the universe. We're all part of the larger one. But if you add on to my true self, my unique perspective looking at the mountain, right, you act on my unique expression, or you get unique self. True self, that's you know, the integral formulation, true self plus perspective equals unique self. Right? And I begin to realize that I'm actually not merely part of the larger whole, I'm part of the larger whole, I'm a unique, distinct manifestation of the larger whole, with a unique perspective that engenders within me unique gifts, right, unique talents, right, unique beauty, unique presence, right, you know, we talk about presence will save the world, well, actually, presence is unique, right, if you sit in silence with Craig at a restaurant, 
and sit in silence with Mark at a restaurant, you'll have a different experience because there's two different unique presences that you're in the presence of, the unique quality of my being and becoming. And so unique self actually emerges from the evolution of awakening itself. When we realize that awakening is not merely awakening to the realization that I'm part of a larger whole, an indivisible and inseparable part of a larger whole, but actually as the evolution of awakening itself unfolds, I realize that I'm a unique part of a larger whole, not a function of my egoic uniqueness. And we'll talk a little bit, I hope, about the distinction between unique self and ego and, and the danger of ego hijacking unique self. Well, but that, that needs to be talked about separately. Uh, but for now, let's just establish <clears throat> excuse me, the depth of the idea right, that my enlightenment means that my light is no longer experienced in science as an undifferentiated mass halo, but actually my light has unique frequency. Right? So the new enlightenment... Right, actually reflect the new science. Right, my light has a unique frequency. It's a unique expression of my divinity, and it creates not only unique gorgeousness, it creates unique responsibility. It creates unique obligation. It means that there's a corner of the universe. Right, there's something to be done that can be done by me alone. Right, I'm not merely the divine noun. Right, I'm God's verb. Right, I act for God in the world. Right, God, and when I say God, I mean right, you know, the God you don't believe in doesn't exist. Right? So, so the mythic God, right? let's, let's celebrate the day the mythic God died, and out of the mythic God was born right, the evolution of God, right? the, the evolving of our divine force. So, so God needs right, your service. God needs my service. Right? I am, you are God's verb. There's something that the divine can do and see and be in the world right, through you, through me, that, that he, she, it, the divine can't be in any other way. And so God, and again, the God you don't believe in doesn't exist, but God loves you so much that God personalizes him, her, itself in you, through you, and as you, right, as your unique self, which emerges from your true self. So, in a word, in a word, I develop, development, I evolve, right, I'm an egoic self. I then become aware of my ego, my observing ego emerges. I'm able to disidentify from my false self. I'm able to make contact with the transcendent. I'm able to make contact with my true self. The total number of true selves in the world is one. My true self, classical enlightenment. My identification and center of gravity in which I experience myself as an individual part of the larger whole. What then emerges from that, what emerges from that is not a metaphysical blah, Right, is not getting lost in the stagnation of eternity and all of its bliss and beauty. What emerges from it is this powerful, pulsing, pulsating, evolutionary, ecstatic impulse moving uniquely through me, inviting me right, to, to write my cosmic letter right, on the lips of the world, right, in the language of the Kabbalah, right, to express my unique presence, to sing the song only I can sing, to, to live the life that's only mine to live. The unique texture of my story emerges after I've jettisoned the pseudo-story of the ego and I begin to live that unique divine face that I am. So out of original face emerges unique face.